Recent protests in Australia have highlighted the plight of the country's indigenous population, which continues to suffer widespread poverty and inequality. Successive governments there have described it as a national shame. Our latest report, looking at Britain's colonial legacies, comes from Sydney, where Shaima Khalil considers the treatment of indigenous Australians. Go! Oh, good boy! It's not far from where he grew up but a far cry from Keenan Mundine's own childhood. That's where the incident happened with my, my friend TJ. And Taken into care age six, Keenan was locked up in juvenile detention for the first time at 14 for theft. He then spent much of the next 15 years behind bars. I turned 18 in juvenile custody. Yeah, I remember that. You just want to be around your family. You just want to be loved. You just want to feel normal. And your turn. Keenan says the justice system unfairly targeted young Aboriginal people like him and that this hasn't changed. I live in constant okay. fear of my children being put in the same positions that I was and having things happen to them that were out of their control and traumatising them for the rest of their life. I worry about them growing older, being arrested by police, being taken to prison. The numbers back up his fear. Aboriginal Australians make up less than 3% of the population, but they represent more than a quarter of adult prisoners here. And in youth detention, more than half the children locked up are Aboriginal. Indigenous Australians are the most incarcerated people in the world. If you're a teenage Aboriginal boy, you're more likely to go to jail than to go to university. And once you're inside the justice system, it's very hard to get out. These are depressing realities, and they have the roots in Australia's colonial past. Massacres and the jailing of Indigenous Australians enabled British settlement here from the late 18th century. Police played a big part in that also forcing people off their land. White missionaries have come among the coloured Aboriginals and are doing noble work in saving the blacks from themselves. And right up to the 1970s, police took part in the removal of huge numbers of indigenous children from their homes to be adopted by white families or put in institutions. The darkness of ignorance has been banished by the bright light of faith. This is not in the past for us. We feel the impact and the legacy of colonisation every single day in the over-policing of our people, in the systemic discrimination that still exists from police interaction through to the courts, through to sentences in prison, being denied bail, um, ending up in prison on remand, through to black deaths in custody. British explorer Captain James Cook remains a hero to some, but to many, He's the man who opened the door for the displacement and dispossession of Australia's First Nations people. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! And the death of George Floyd in the United States has shone the light on Cook's questionable legacy. Like the US, there are now calls for shifting resources away from policing and prisons and for structural change. If you talk to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, a lot of them will say that the government doesn't care. I would say that governments do care. They spend a lot of money and a lot of effort trying to make things better. The problem is they, they don't try hard enough to change the way they do business. So if you start all the way back from when the British first arrived in Australia, the governments in Australia have never treated Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as distinct political communities who are entitled to make decisions over their own lives. If we did that and we listened to the Aboriginal people, then we may see improvement in these numbers. Some projects trying a community approach to justice are getting government funding. Though Keenan's small charity that tries to keep young people away from prison relies heavily on donations. I don't want to make bad choices in life. I just want to be like a good kid and like, but that's what the police officers think. They think that like, cause I'm black, I'm just going to end up in jail, selling drugs or something. But I'm not like that. I'll, I want to own my own business, go to university and stuff. The biggest things you guys know. The violence and trauma suffered by indigenous Australians has been passed from one generation to the next since the early days of colonization. For these young people, the hope is that their future will be different from their ancestors' painful past. Shaima Khalil, BBC News, Sydney.